Hey, I'm Tom and this is TRV Collectibles, where I go to yard sales, estate sales, and thrift stores, and even swap meets, and I buy things for a low price and then flip them for an even larger profit. And this is a total recap of the Kobe swap meet. How awesome was that place? It, I couldn't be contained in just one video. I had to really show you what it was while being there. And I had to split it into my very first series of three videos. So if you haven't already, be sure to go back and check them all out because you're going to see some that you probably would have bought yourself. That place was absolutely awesome. Now I've been to swap meets in the past, but this one was huge, it was ginormous. It would take you a whole day. You could bring your family to this place and have a great time. It was a wonderful day out. The weather was beautiful, but granted we were in San Diego, California, and I had wonderful company by some of my best friends, Chris and Jake. They wanted to check out the Kobe swap meet that was in their hometown. I was in town visiting and I totally wanted to see something that was truly something from San Diego. The Kobe swap meet has a, had a swap meet for the last more than 25 years. Uh, it was actually started in 1976. And people from all over California go to the Kobe swap meet every single week since there really isn't an off season just based on the weather being what it is in San Diego. So a lot of people will bring their wares to this parking lot and sell everything that they have. And I'm not just saying people that resell, people in general, people looking to get rid of things, people that support their small business, you name it. People wanting to start a food business. You have tons of people and the price point to get in was a dollar on Friday and two dollars on Saturdays and Sundays per person. You can't beat it. It's a wonderful walk around. I'm sure you would have probably seen something that you would have probably gotten. And Chris and Jake were there to see not only what they could pick up for themselves, but also what they could figure out, what they could flip. Now, they have also resold in the past, but they're very familiar with sports equipment, very specifically baseball. So when they spawn something, they hardly have to look it up and they just know it will bring money in. And that's something I admire, that that's a category that I really don't understand as well. Now I know certain niches and categories like tennis, but as far as like baseball and basketball and football, I am very unfamiliar, but going with them helped me learn a little bit more about baseball and specific equipment that I didn't know about before. Now granted, Jake was also looking for a blazer and he was also looking to get some nice bling on his, uh, on his wrist. So you would have seen that and he was looking around, but be sure to catch it if you haven't already. Now, we wanted to figure out what we were there for. It was my very first time. It was actually quite overwhelming because there were so many booths and so many things to look at and just so many things to buy. Now granted, you only have so much money in a day and so many hours. We had gotten there very early in the day and we were hitting some of the very first, first booths. And the way it looked like, a lot of the vendors that had prearranged purchased items, meaning that they weren't really reselling. They didn't buy anything out of a storage locker, put it down on a table and say, hey, go to town. Like it was clearly laid out as they were going to make money off of what they bought from their collection, AKA like the Funko Pops. You can clearly see that those were curated and or they've gotten a license somehow to sell Funko. Now you can see a lot of Amazon returns and Amazon products that people have created. And if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, there are a lot of people that want to sell on Amazon, not necessarily in a reselling capacity. They want something that is very consistent, very repetitive, and they create their own product. Now granted, they try to create it on a trend, like I was mentioning in the second video, part two, um, fidget spinners. The fidget spinners were you know, highly, very popular. They still are, but not as they were a couple years ago, where you could get them in every shape, size, and color. And people were selling them on Amazon. And when the trend kind of died, they were left over with abundance amount of fidget spinners. So what are they gonna do to offload it? They're gonna offload it locally so they don't have to ship it, AKA going to a swap meet and trying to sell it not only in bulk, but piece by piece for a dollar or two. So they can get their initial buy cost back. 
So in the first couple rows, that's what I was really seeing. People that were buying to intentionally sell and people trying to unload Amazon pallets and or product they had gotten back from the Amazon warehouse that they couldn't necessarily sell online. Which is good and all because there are some great deals that you can get, but you have to make sure that you're looking up this stuff uh, to make sure that you can possibly resell it. Kobe is not only for resellers, but it's also for people just looking to buy for themselves, to get a good deal. And you could really get some really good personal deals uh, if you're looking in the right places and you know the right vendors. Uh, there is the make and model of every which, which way or thing that you could ever possibly want at this swap meet, from homemade rugs, to custom lids, to customized shoes, to every single Funko Pop ever made possible, to hubcaps for a 1964 and a half Mustang, you name it. It was here and you just had to dig and find it. So the first couple rows, I was really interested in personal buying and I was really looking for something unique that I wanted to take away. And then I had to remember what I was really there for, not only to re find things to resell, but also just to have a good time and relax. And as we were going about it, Chris and Jake really started to get into it, and that was really a lot of fun, that they started to look up things to resell. Um, and it was great to share the information, that, at least that what I knew, and of course I love to share it here too, but it's fun to share it with your friends that are a little bit interested, because there's so much to look at. Um, as we went through and we got deeper and deeper into the sale, that's when I started to find those resellers uh, that would go out and buy storage lockers and, you know, uh, find all the gems and put out the rest. And for me, putting out the rest is not too bad because the categories that I'm looking for, especially when I have to bring it back, uh, are something small, light, and something that I can carry. So I'm looking for DVDs, I'm looking for media, I'm looking for things that are, you know, small. Uh, with Chris and Jake being local, they're literally, their categories are open and, you know, available to seeing whatever we could, we could possibly want to get. Now, the thing is, is that halfway through the day, this place is so large that if you wanted to stop and say, hey, I'm kind of hungry, they have food vendors up the wazoo. Any kind of food that you could possibly want, they have, and it's great. You don't even have to leave the sale, and some of this food is really, really good. So know that, too, that there's a wide variety of food available and drink uh, to your heart's content to have a good time. Uh, as we got deeper and we saw those, those tables full of, full of storage locker cleanouts, uh, that's something that I really have not seen at a swap meet, at least the ones that I've gone to before. We met a gentleman midway through the sale where Chris picked up his Lego set. Um, that he literally said, yeah, he picks up the, the big priced items that he knows will flip really fast and get it out the door because he already has the vendors that are looking for it and he puts out the rest to see whatever people will buy and then he throws it all away, comes back the next week with more stuff from another clear out, sells that all and then donates or throws away the rest every single week and he's been doing it for years. So he's literally giving things away, and when Chris asked about the Lego set, he gave him a discount immediately. And then Jake uh, re uh, went to the same man and picked up ski boots. Now granted, you know in California you have a lot of different options, so shipping from California to California is rather reasonable in price, kind of comparable from out of state. So they also have that advantage of well, so ski boots can be heavy, but you're also in a state where you can ski. So people are looking for that actively locally rather than from across the country on the East Coast so they can buy ski boots secondhand but for a better price. Jake got ski boots for a great price. Chris got Legos for a good price from this guy who literally is giving it all away for pennies on the dollar just because he knows he's going to come back the next week and do it all over again. As we went through the sale it got more and more fun. I kept finding things that I didn't expect to see or find. Uh, you, I'd also see like small individual businesses like uh, that massage booth. There were also businesses that wanted to talk about hair and hair products. There were online businesses that just set up booths just to talk to people. It's a great space to share and meet people, especially if you're starting a small business. Also, if you do reselling, it's a great place to unload unwanted items that you just can't get rid of fast enough that you can probably make your initial buy cost back. 
there were a lot of there were a lot of pieces that I would have picked up that were just too big for me. We found a whole table full of old slides. If you can find the right ones of images of old vintage things, you can make a really decent amount of money. There were collections of magazines, collections of books, and you could walk away from the sale if you go first thing on a Friday and you could really fill your whole eBay store and go once in a whole month and take the rest of the month to log and list everything that you, you purchased. I was amazed by the Kobe swap meet, and for those that are in San Diego and for those that are local to it, I'm a little bit jealous of you. Now granted, not every week is going to be, a, you know, a, a home run or a hit, but what's going to happen is that you're going to walk away usually with something that you can turn for a profit, make a little bit of money on, and, and that's something that's a reliability that's really cool. Knowing the weather is going to be great and knowing that you can go every single week and and Have an opportunity to find something or make a connection that can sell you bulk items uh, Whether it be at an estate sale or a garage clear out or a storage clear out and Say hey if you come in, I'll give you this specific category for X price Imagine the possibilities that you could have as a reseller It's endless and it's absolutely so cool to see that I've seen previous resellers do this So I'd highly recommend the Kobe swap meet not only for reselling, for not only for personal, but for just a good day out. It's a good fun day, just to have a good time. Now, for me, I did pick up, uh, I did pick up a couple things, but the one item that I wanted to talk about today that I did pick up and I did mention it in my video, the very first part one, was a uh, Jane Eyre DVD. Uh, it was the same lady that I was trying to buy the Lego minifigures from, and she wouldn't come down from me buying the whole tote, which I really couldn't buy. And the minifigures were going to make me some money. So I saw that she had some DVDs. I was like, let me take a look through these DVDs. I noticed there were there were uh, a lot of BBC programs, which I do like to flip and sell. So I flipped through them. I found a brand new Jane Eyre DVD. I bought it for $1. And as of last week, I went ahead and I sold it for... $40 plus $3.19 shipping. Not bad for a small item, wouldn't you think? Right? So overall, I bought one item. I sold one item. It covered all the expenses of the day for food, for tickets, for fun. And it was just a good day out. And I got to see a whole bunch of categories that I had never seen before. And I learned a lot from Chris and Jake specifically about sports equipment, but a couple other things as well. It was a great day to not only go to the Kobe Swap Meet, but also spend great time with good friends. I had an absolutely wonderful day, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. Now, if there's anything that you saw in this sale that really caught your eye or you wanted to know more about the Kobe Swap Meet, please reach out to me. Let me know, whether it be on Instagram or the comments below. Also, if there was anything that you saw through the whole sale that I might have missed that you would have picked up, let me know. Put it down below. Also, if you could, please click that like button. It'd be greatly appreciated, and if you haven't already, please be sure to click that subscribe button and that bell notification so you never miss out on a future video. Well, as always, my name's Tom, and this has been TRB Collectibles.